Hello everyone, welcome to Heart Center Tarot. As always, my name is Marina and I will be your guide for this portion of the journey. And I just realized that my sound initially was very low. Okay, I think I fixed it. So, <clears throat> as you know, I generally try to pass along information and share things with you guys in hopes that you will share it with others who might need to hear the uh, the message. So with that in mind, we're going to have a little bit of a lesson on immigration. It's a big, broad term. And we need to understand what it is that we mean when we say immigration. It's also important that other people that we speak to understand what we mean by immigration and we understand what they mean by immigration. Because the two, the two are vastly different in some cases. So <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, um, I live in Canada and I came here in 1967 I was a child, obviously, and my family immigrated to Canada. Uh, we, we were then part of the uh, former Yugoslavia, which was a quasi-communist country. So my parents decided to leave, and one, one evening... Uh, my parents and my sister and I got on a train with one suitcase. And we rode the train into Vienna, Austria. There we were met by some other um, family friends who were already there. And they had secured an apartment for us. Now, we were not in that quote-unquote apartment by ourselves. We made the trip with my aunt and uncle and my cousin and a very good friend of theirs and their son. So there were uh, two, four, six adults, uh, four children, and we were in a one-room apartment. We had a hot stove. That was it. And as children, we had to be very, very quiet um, because we didn't want to upset the landlady. You don't want to upset the apple cart. So we lived and stayed in that one room apartment as my parents applied to immigrate to Canada. We had to go through some inoculations. We had to go through health testing. Uh, they had to be vetted to make sure um, that we were meeting all the conditions to immigrate to Canada. And um, my dad and my uncle both found jobs that were sort of paid under the table because we needed to pay for our visas. And we needed to pay for the, do the documents. We needed to pay for the inoculations. We needed to pay for everything. So we were finally accepted um, as immigrants to Canada. And we flew out of Vienna to Montreal. And we settled in Montreal for a good number of years. Now, <clears throat> we landed as immigrants. And once we landed in Canada, we were able to become permanent residents. The concept of immigration is when a family in any part of the world decides that they would like to live somewhere else. It is a conscious choice that they make to leave their homeland or their place of birth and to go and live 
um, in another country. Now, <clears throat> I know in our case, um, we had to show that we had sufficient funds um, to look after ourselves. We also had to have a sponsor, someone who was already in Canada, had been in Canada for quite some time, and they would take on the responsibility that should something happen, um, that they would look after us financially so that uh, until we became permanent residents or citizens, um, that we were not a burden on the government. One of the reasons that we were accepted was because my father and my uncle had, um, they had trades that were very much needed in Canada. My father was a machinist and a tool and die maker, as was my uncle. That was a trade that was very much um, in demand. So that put us at the top of the list. Arriving in Canada, I spoke absolutely no English. Uh, neither did my sister, neither did my father, and neither did my mother. So it took a little while to get accustomed to the way that things work in Canada. It also required us to um, initially have a translator with us wherever we went, such as uh, my father was able to find a job fairly quickly and then needed a bank account. Well, that wasn't something that we had in the former Yugoslavia. You'd Whatever money you had, you, you kept because you never knew when um, when the government would decide to take your money for whatever reason. Sometimes without a reason. They just saw that, oh, look, you accumulated a little bit. Hmm. We'll take that. Thank you very much. So setting up a bank account, uh, making sure that we had all the right documentation, um, signing a lease for our first apartment, and what that lease entailed, what was required of us and what was required of the landlord. Putting my sister and I into school, into elementary school. What school do you choose? Um, how far is it? Can you walk there? Um, what kind of education you would receive and so on. The to me at the time, it didn't seem like it was a big deal because obviously I was a child. You know, I wasn't involved in a lot of the adult decisions, but I know what kind of a struggle it was initially for my parents. Having to learn a new language, having to get accustomed to a new culture, a new way of living, a new way of doing things. Um, New, new holidays, for example. Um, our very first Halloween, we had no idea what was going on. None. None. The, the concept of um, you know, going, going shopping was um, a little difficult because it took a while to understand that the things that were on the shelf that you could buy today would be there tomorrow as well and next week as well. We weren't used to that. Um, we were used to going to the going to the butchers and standing in line. And when your turn came, whatever was left over, that's what you bought. Um, same thing with bakeries. You needed bread? No problem. Yeah, it might cost you quite a lot to get it. Um, but you waited a line, you waited your turn, and you got what they gave you. So it took, like I say, quite a while to adjust to the idea that um, what was on the shelf would be on the shelf later that it wasn't a grab all you can right now. 
because you don't know when it's going to come back again. So it took an awful lot of time to adjust to all that. And we came as immigrants. We came with skills and things that we could contribute to Canadian society. Now, because we were leaving a, um, a political situation that was becoming um, uncomfortable, let's say, had we just found the means to gather together some money, left the country, because as a communist country, we couldn't have applied to immigrate to Canada. We had to go to, to, um, to a secondary country and apply from there. Um, we... <laughs> Okay, see, now I've lost my train of thought. Oh, well, it, it happens. It happens sometimes. So had we, oh, I remember. Had we just simply left and showed up on Canada's doorstep and said, hey, we're here with the clothes on our backs. We're here. We would not have been immigrants. We would have been refugees. So... A refugee is someone who is forced to leave their homeland. It's not a conscious decision that, that they make that, well, I've looked around the world and I really think living here would be fabulous for family experience. It's literally you have to leave because either political situations, um, either you're the wrong religion or um, you belong to the, to the wrong sect. Your um, you're not uh, you're not educated enough, or whatever. That there's a myriad of reasons. Um, there's may, maybe maybe your homeland has been hit by natural disaster and flooding, and there's starvation everywhere. You know, no one wants to sit back and watch their family members die. So you do whatever you can to give them a better life. That is what a refugee is. A lot of people, I find, are conflating the two together. And when they say things like, well, we've got to get rid of the immigrants, they're kind of putting everyone in the same basket. And there are things that are very different about the two groups. And along besides just the immigrant, the, uh, the refugee, um, you've, got, um, you've got migrants, um, you've got temporary residents. There's all kinds of things that go in there under the umbrella of immigration. So as I said, immigrants make that conscious choice, and they will add value. Um, they generally come with resources, whether that's financial resources or whether it's to fill desperately needed uh, job situations, whatever it is, they bring something of value to the country that they are immigrating to. Refugees, they, they may bring certain skills, um, but they haven't had time to prepare in order to leave their country. It's, it was something that just had to be done right now. Okay. So when people say that, you know, you need to get rid of the immigrants, it's kind of a, it's a messy term. Um, it's an unpleasant term because um, it implies that, that you have done something that you shouldn't have done, that somehow you have been given things that are not your right to have. There are, there are many refugees who 
would rather be in their homeland, who would rather be surrounded by their family, the friends, the culture that they are familiar with, a climate that they are used to, um, ways of communicating, um, socializing with others that are known to them. They're comfortable with that. And they have been, through no fault of their own, put in a situation where now they have to acclimate themselves to life on a completely different scale, something that they never even conceived of. So while immigrants bring value and generally um, are able to be self-sustaining, refugees generally come with the clothes on their back and maybe a suitcase, and that's it. They get out of their country with whatever they can grab at the moment, at the last minute. So when refugees get to a new country, it is not, they don't show up because they want to be a burden on society. They show up saying, I need help. Please, I need a hand up, not a hand out, a hand up. So while they are getting used to how things operate um, in, in their new country, while they are setting things up, they do require help. And as human beings, you know, this is, this is what we do to take care of each other. This is not something that is permanent, right? Refugees do not receive, as many people believe, that immigrants and refugees are just automatically given something that they aren't entitled to. It's not necessarily the case. While you're trying to figure out, um, as a refugee, you know, what... Does my, does my child have to go to school? They're, um, you know, what, what are the laws? What, how do things work here? They may need someone to hold their hand for a while to show them how things are done, to show them how you register your kids for school. <coughs> Excuse me. How you find a doctor. Um, where do you go to look for a job? Where do you go to sign up for classes so that you can learn how to speak English, so that you can actually communicate with the people in whose country you are? They may need assistance with shelter for a while, where you know, the government can step in or the community steps in and they will pay the rent for a particular amount of time until the family is able to look after itself. That is something that I think we, as human beings, is what we owe each other, right? When you see someone who is hurt, um, who is struggling through no fault of their own, doesn't your heart go up to them and you want to ask, what can, what can I do to help? That's refugees. <laughs> Well, let's talk about migrants. Migrants are people who will generally, <clears throat> they're, not, um, they're not housed sort of in, in one place. They, they tend to move around. So it, it would be like, um, you know, let, let's say people who'd, um, who pick strawberries, right? So they are migrant workers they will be hired by the, the farmer to pick the strawberries and they will go from one farm to the next, so on and so forth. Now, because they don't, um, I was gonna say they don't contribute, they, they contribute a lot of physical labor, but because they're not necessarily contributing and taking advantage of the, the programs and things that are available um, in that country, um, they are looking to support themselves and to support families that they have left 
back home. They're not really concerned about making top dollar. They are concerned with surviving. As long as I have enough that I can feed myself and that I can send some money back home so that I know my family has got a little something, um, that's good. So those jobs generally tend to be very low paying jobs. Um, the migrants will accept whatever is on offer because something is better than nothing. Um, the people that hire them more often than not realize that they're in a bad situation. And so they're not going to pay top dollar. You know, they'll, they'll pay whatever they can get away with. So <clears throat> we've got all these little nuanced things that are all put under the umbrella of immigration. You don't realize how much those immigrants, uh, migrants, refugees, how much they ultimately contribute financially to their new country. In the case of migrants, taxes are being taken off of whatever earnings they make. Um, they need to pay into Social Security and all kinds of different things that are deductions off their paycheck. And yet, they will never, ever be able to get that money back because they're not permanent residents of that country. Does the government give them a break and say, oh, you migrant workers? No, okay, never mind. You only pay 2% tax. No, the government simply takes it, pockets it, says thank you very much. In the case of immigrants, um, they may after a time qualify for some of the programs so that they are able to get some of that money back, such as You've paid taxes, you file your income tax, you take deductions. If you owe the government money, you better pay it back. If the government owes you money, they send it to you. So to say that immigrants are getting things for nothing is simply not true. I think as human beings, it is our job to look after those that are in need, those that are suffering, those that are looking for a little bit of peace, that are looking for a little bit of security where they don't have to watch their children 24 hours a day in case something bad happens. They don't have to you know, bring the children and everybody is in one bed all huddled together because, you know, you never know when the air raid siren is going to go off or when an explosion is going to hit. Imagine what the, what is that like to, to feel that every day, every hour of every day. So <clears throat> this is your you're less than half hour. I'm trying to keep it under half an hour. This is your quick lesson on immigration, refugees, and migrants. Feel free to share it with those who might have a hard time understanding that there is a difference between those, that they are not one in the same thing, that without immigrants and without migrants, a lot of the jobs that are being done behind the scenes, especially with migrants, that you don't see, but you would sure notice if they weren't there. Immigrants tend to be well educated. They tend to have skills that are desirable to the new country. They don't make too many demands of the new country because they're trying to fit in 
they have made a conscious decision that this is where they want to live. So they will do as much as they can to fit in, to, to get along, to be part of the community. They don't travel all that distance and leave their families behind so that they can come here or here to Canada, to the U.S., to wherever that might be, um, and expect that things are going to be the same as they were back home. They know that things are going to be different. They know it's going to be challenging. And they're willing to take on that challenge. And they're willing to help others who might be going through something similar. So before we say, let's get rid of the immigrants, um, look around. Who cleans your schools? Who makes the bed and cleans the room when you're in a hotel? Who looks after your children while you're at work? Who stocks your grocery shelves? Who makes sure that there is food in the grocery store when you show up? Who provides the fresh fruit and the fresh vegetables that are there? Who drives the bus that takes your kids to school? Who teaches your kids or helps in the classroom? To teach your kids. None of us are citizens of any one country. We all come from somewhere. And it doesn't matter if you have been here for 19 generations. When that first person came to where they are right now, Someone help them. Someone help them. So isn't it time that we help those? Isn't it time that we help those who came after us? And don't forget, unless you are 100% Native American, Native Canadian, you're an immigrant. You're not a citizen. You are an immigrant in a country that was taken by your forebears. So, you know, spare me the, oh, well, yeah. my family arrived on Mayflower. Yes, key words, arrived on the Mayflower. They were met by the natives, the people who were already in this land. So there you go. That's my little spiel for tonight. <sighs> if you, any comments, by all means, I will warn you though, that over the last little while, I have been getting some, some comments that are, mm, they're not very, they're not very kind. So generally, what I do with those is I simply delete and I block. So if you have something of value to share, by all means, I'd love to hear your comments. If you are trying to preach or if you're trying to convert me or if you want to save my soul or if you want to, or, don't, don't, I won't engage. All right. So there we go. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you for indulging me in this. And I hope that maybe um, it's given you a little bit of a different perspective on just what that, that term really, really means and all the little subsections of it. So have a super, super evening. Have a fabulous rest of the week. And those of you in the U.S. that are celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow, happy Thanksgiving to you. Alrighty, take care. Know that I love each and every one of you. See you later.